Hey, what is up, everyone? Chris Manning here from the Locked on Cavs podcast with my co-host Evan Damerel. On today's show, we're going to give you some updates on the latest happenings in Cavs world. And we're going to talk about that the chance that Jared Allen perhaps could become an all-star as kind of the lead subject there. And to end the show, we are going to talk about what we think the biggest surprises for this Cavs season as we go through an award style bit over the also break that's all coming up today on locked on Cavs, your daily cleveland cavaliers podcast part of the locked on podcast network you are locked on Cavs, your daily cleveland cavaliers podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day Before we get into today's show, a couple notes. First, I want to thank you for making Locked on Cavs your first listen every single day. Remember, we are free and available on all platforms that include YouTube, where you can do us a solid and go subscribe and, and help us increase those numbers even further. And I want to tell you that today's show is brought to you by Bet Online and Bill Bar. Okay, Evan, let's get into some of the news first. Let's start off with the fact that James Harden, the Philadelphia 76ers guard, will not be playing in the All-Star game this upcoming weekend as the 76ers have announced that he will not play until after the All-Star break as he continues to rehab a hamstring issue. But why is this Cavs news? Oh, this, of course, means there's an All-Star spot open, which means that Adam Silver is going to have to pick someone. So, Jared Allen, the Cavs center, would seem to be one of those candidates. I I think, Evan, you were, you were in media availability on Monday. J.B. Bickers have said stuff about it. Kevin Love said stuff about this. I think obviously he has the support internally and we can talk through his case and stuff in a minute, but what, what kind of updates did we get from practice? Um, practice wise updates, uh, Larry Markman in terms of, well, no, just oh, in, in terms, terms of, of Allen, just, just, Allen, yes, just in terms of what they had yeah, to say about now. Jamie Baker's staff said it'd be personally disappointed. And he think it's just disappointing overall. If Jared Allen doesn't get picked and Kevin love kind of just reiterated those same sentiments. He said, that Jarrett should have been picked as reserve from the get the get go by the coach league coaches. Um, obviously Darius is picked, and he kind of just mentioned that he's seen it all in his experience. He's a five time All Star. He's picked as an injury replacement. He's picked as a reserve. He's picked as a starter. And he thinks Jarrett. He told him it doesn't matter how you get in. All that matters is that you get in. And Bickerstaff just kind of reiterated his point as well that. This is a league that rewards winning as the biggest accomplishment, and no team has really won as much other than the Chicago Bulls and the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference. Um, so you should reward it. I think it's also, you know, it's a big deal that Cleveland's hosting. Maybe having more than one All-Star is a big thing, but I, I think Allen should get in. He might have some competition from Pascal Siakam, maybe Boston's Jalen Brown as well. But I, at this point, I don't see any indication of why he shouldn't. I feel like he was one of the last like cutoffs, I guess, since it's a 13 man roster. I feel he was like the 14th pick by the coaches, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I don't think like just to preface this, I think the way I want to discuss this and I think the way you'd want to discuss this is, look, I don't want to shit on a bunch of other very good NBA players like oh, no. was, fans can do that. We, fans we, we both have the mentality that. This is the best basketball league in the world, and you are picked to be an all-star for a reason. And I'm not going to diminish if someone got picked as an all-star or not. Yes, and look, we also, like, I, I, the Raptors are a very fun team to watch. I've had fun watching some of the, the Celtics stuff of late. We do not watch those teams or think about those teams as much. We're just going to be more familiar with Allen and perhaps have a bias towards him in that way because it's someone we have watched and seen his impact in, in all of this stuff. I just think here, here's the case. Let's just make the case for him without disparaging other very good NBA players. Okay. I think unquestionably he has been one of the best centers in the league this year. He is not at the level of Embiid or Jokic because those guys have an offensive load that is frankly just different. Those guys are doing so much in offense in a way that Jared Allen is not. Allen is having a career offensive year. It's just it's just a different kind of offensive year than what Embiid is doing and than what Jokic is doing, et cetera. Analytically, mm -hmm. um, 
Evan, he's there, there's not if you want to compare like to just say what he's been in with the analytics, say he's been one of the very best players in the league this year. Dunks and threes um has him as ex- creating 8.6 expected wins this year. That's in the 97th percentile of his position. That's very, very good. He's got a um expect, expected plus minus of plus 4.8, which is in the 97th percentile of his position. Compare that to Pascal Siakam, that's he's more than double, and then Siakam and in, in just sort of his expected impact in that with that one statistic. He's averaging this year 16.2 points per game, 11.1 rebounds, 1.3 blocks, with ha- while shooting 66.5 percent from the field, and has a true shooting percentage of 68.7 percent. Those offensive numbers have dipped a little bit. His efficiency in the offensive end has sort of declined in recent weeks. He, at a, at a time this year, he was shooting above 70 percent on 10 plus field per field goal attempts per game had that held he would have been the first player in nba history to done that it's still possible obviously but he's dipped off a little bit in recent weeks I right, but i think the argument for allen here is, is simple we've made it before we'll, we'll make it again um he's been really really good he's been the anchor to a Cavs defense that is one of the best in the league i think for my money this has been the best year of his career I, he just he's been awesome and like i think there was an argument to put him in the all-star game above darius garland if you're going to pick one Cav, like i would have gone garland i think you would have gone garland there was an argument that you could have made that's very smart people have made that you put jared Allen in over darius garland he's been awesome he deserves it. if he doesn't get it that's not an affront on him the team will say it is and all that stuff but you know it isn't it's really hard there certainly also could be a second spot created um, if Zach Levine ends up opting out as well due to his no any issues, and we're recording this um, on Monday in the afternoon, so like this could be announced by the time you're listening to this. So like, keep that in mind as well. We're gonna put this out a little earlier, uh, just to to get ahead of that news cycle. But the reality is that like this could be announced, and like you could have opinions on this on what Adam Silver decides one way or the other. But he at the TLDR, this is a very very deserving basketball player for an All Star spot. It absolutely, or sorry, not it. He absolutely is a very deserving player, and you have a good point as well with the Zach Levine injury. I know Woj reported that right now before he sees a specialist to get a second opinion on his knee. It's it's planned for Zach Levine to participate in All Star festivities, mostly the All Star game on Sunday. Um, if I were the Bulls, and if I were Zach Levine, maybe you just shut it down and rest up a little bit. Um, I did ask JB Bickerstaff a little jokingly, but he gave me a pretty good answer of. Did you, because Tom Withers called him a basketball lifer, which is true. He's been around the NBA his entire life. Um, did he have any advice for his young players? JB said, I hope my guys find some time to rest as well and not just like rest, rest, just get their bodies right for the remainder stretch of the season. So I guess the only added luxury of Jarrett maybe not playing is he doesn't have to ramp up the play in the all-star game. He already has to do the skills contest on Saturday. But yeah, I agree. He is a deserving player. I think if Levine has held out the current just debate that is going on between him or Siakam because Siakam is just on a unbelievable hot streak as of late and the Raptors are just kind of hot as of late. I understand the merits for Pascal Siakam. Obviously if Levine's out, you can just say both of these two deserve to be in. I don't think any player isn't deserving to be an all-star. Like if you're an all-star, you're there for a reason. Um, maybe it's just the fact that I host a show called Lot on Cavs. Maybe it's the fact that I watch the Cavaliers every single night, even on my birthday, because Chris Manny makes me work that in most major holidays. You act like but, I have like controlling on your purse strings. I have no control over this. We're just pawns, and we're just we're we're the what is what did Kyrie say? What is what is his wacko thing that he said? We're just puppeteers, baby. Yeah, I I'm not a puppeteer, bro. You know, continue. But anyways, um. I, I yeah, Jared Allen just deserves to get in. I think it was a little disappointing to see him not get in the first time around. I, th- I, you and I were kind of going back and forth on it. Chris already had it drafted up on fear the sword that Jared Allen was going to be the all-star pick and ended up being Darius Garland. Cause we both were just kind of like, you know, Darius is probably the biggest all-star for this team, but you can make an easier case for Jared Allen just in terms of the depth of the position. The league. Yeah. Well, and it, other people that yeah. they've gotten in, garland's way in terms of reserves yeah well and it took i think like in thinking about this i had like a shift over the course of the season where like i thought at the beginning of the year 
up until like I started really digging into it and thinking about it in a way that I, I don't, uh, to be fair, like to myself, I didn't, I hadn't necessarily before because the all star stuff is something I don't necessarily try to spend as much capacity on as some of the other stuff because it's just not. I, just think it's, it's just, I always just think it's dumb that players' it, contracts have incentives it's, on all star. It's, it's insane things. that like you, you leave these things. It's, it's insane. And like I just, it's just one of those things that I, there's other parts of the game and thinking about the team and stuff that I think are more interesting to me from like a mental nourishment standpoint. But like, I had a point I think had Allen ahead of Garland, and I think like that that shifted for me. I think when I when it came into Garland to me was clearly the Cavs All Star I, I go with there. But he, Allen's deserving, Siakam would be deserving. But like I, if if I had to, if it was up to me, I would pick Allen. I think the, the, there's a very just clear strong argument for him. If you want, takes another other All Stars, Locked in Raptors. Um, you know, Sean feels very strongly about this from the Siakam perspective at, at Locked in Raptors. Um, I'm yeah, sure John Corrales has Sean takes on it. Wrong. I'm sure you know Kane Pittman. Ha- I'm sure Kane Pittman has takes on it at Locked On Bucks in terms of like the Drew Holiday of it all or whatever. So uh, we'll stay tuned. We'll update you perhaps Wednesday if we we hear kind of what the All Star situation is. All right, after the break, we're going to get into some of the other updates from from the Cavs world at large. Uh, but first, Evan, I got to tell everyone about our friends at Bill Park. Look, Bill Park is the best tasting protein bar on the market, and Evan, it's that time of year to stick to your news resolutions. And why not do it with Bill Bar? Bill Bars are loaded with protein. Most Bill Bars have 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, 4 grams of sugar, and just 4 net carbs. Like, there's also these great Bill Puffs, which come in great flavors, include, including co- coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie, and yummy cinnamon churro. They're all great. They're all covered in 100% chocolate. And they're always dropping new flavors, too. For instance, I know you ordered a bunch of these. There's the white chocolate cookies and cream. Mm-hmm. and a plus stuff and like they're willing to try all these different flavors try them out they're they're never bad they're always great um and they've mint brownie coconut coconut almonds cookie dough when they have that in stock you got to stick up on that one for sure they're all great can't recommend them enough go to build.com use the promo code locked 15 and get 15 percent off your order again promo code locked 15 for 15 percent off at built.com go claim that deal right Evan, uh, let's get into the other notes and updates from Cavs media availability on Monday. You alluded to this in the first segment. Um, mm-hmm. It seems like we have some progression, some update, some potential Larry market in return, even if it is not this week. It, it seems like it is coming sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yes and no. Every time JB Bickerstaff is asked about Larry Mark and his recovery, it's usually just the same answer that he's doing some on court activity. Um, I just think it's more of just gauging how his body responds and just whether or not it's worth it for the Cavs and the grand scheme of things to rush him back. Um, Bickerstaff more or less just seemed to shut down Mark and his availability for Tuesday's game in Atlanta which I think is the right call. You just kind of let him get that extra rest. You bring him back when I think they're in Detroit on Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, the following week after Mm All-Star. And you just kind of get him acclimated. Maybe bring him along slowly. The Pistons could be a good game to do that because it's a lesser opponent. And you trying to go in there and maybe build some familiarity because you have that added luxury. It's um, not like a high, more high pressure situation a la Philly. Um, You really have to think about that. That's, going to be the interesting update there and just kind of ongoing Darius Garland practice today. He bigger step didn't elaborate, but it's, it, it seemed like he practiced in full. So I think I know he's mentioned several times now they're going to kind of take his back on a day-to-day basis. There's going to be days where he doesn't practice. There's going to be games. He doesn't play, especially in back-to-back scenarios because you want to have him available for the long term instead of just like these immediate games. And I was hoping to ask bigger staff about this, but just kind of got pressed for time, but I, I do wonder just with the all-star break coming, this is just a, a breath of relief for this entire Cavs squad because we talk about the rookie wall of Evan Mobley. I just think this Cavs team playing so hard and so fast and so quickly for almost 60 games now is starting to hit them a little bit harder than it should because it's just isn't sustainable or realistic to expect them to play at that level for 82 games. And Maybe they're starting to look a little sluggish and a little tired, and they could just collectively just use this All Star break to come back fresh. Yeah, I, I think like the Cavs, just like I think every other team in the league, looks at the All Star break as like a you know it's a chance to refresh. Certain guys obviously will um, go on vacation. You know, I, I I don't know exactly like what the full scope of that is in terms of like the the COVID situation we're in. You know, like it's a little different than than years past with COVID or last year with COVID, where like they really didn't they, travel was 
kind of advised to be restricted. I think theoretically you could see more guys getting that, that kind of quick vacation in. Um, I, you know, certainly a lot of players will be in Cleveland because they're going to be participating. It's not just guys that will be playing on Sunday, but guys playing in the rising stars game, guys playing in on uh, participating in all star Saturday night, all that stuff. So there, there's like a lot going on. Guys will do different things. It is very rehab and rest focus more than anything else. Even the guys playing on the all-star game certainly are, are being more active perhaps than some of the other guys, but it is not the full bore kind of been out. And I, and I think if you're the Cavs, I think you're hoping you come back from the all-star break refreshed right like I, I think if you're looking at this team you're hoping that even if he plays on Sunday and, and whatever you're hoping Darius Garland comes back and, and looks a little bit fresher right like you're hoping Darius Garland's back is a little bit less of an issue once he once he returns you're hoping Evan Mobley has a little more pep in his step when he gets back because he has I think looked a little worn down and tired at times um, you're hoping Jared Allen you know is, is is refreshed you're hoping all these guys that are one through whatever in your rotation come back and are, are looking good. Um, I mean, Kevin Love, I think, you know, at times he's looked tired. Like, I think part of the reason you've seen his shot a little bit off, his legs have just looked a little dead because he's played a ton of minutes. And, like, he could probably use a couple of days just to relax, you know, get some rehab and, and relaxation in and not have to, like, go through the ground of this. Like, the NBA season is so, like, again, like, fo- you know, it's not football in the sense of how, like, violent the game is. It is not physical and, and grinding in that way but it is this 82 game marathon it is a taxing thing on your body when guys talk about it how hard it is to make it through a season like it is it is tricky um evan was mm-hmm. there anything else from monday that that struck you as notable jb is like as far as injuries and stuff goes goes very you know he talks it, around stuff. Mark, close to his chest. yeah yeah the market and stuff seems as if like he is just progressing i think the read on it the whole time was probably after the all-star break but you know, he's he traveled and like the broadcast keeps making note of the fact that he's been traveling, which is usually a sign they are getting closer to participating unless you're like out for the year already, like Sexton when he's mm-hmm. traveled. So there this is obviously just kind of day by day as we go here. But it was there anything else that stood out to you from from Monday, whether it's from him or from Kevin Love, who also spoke? Well, JB also was talking a bit about how Joel B just posterized Jared Allen, and he just kind of put it this way. He first said, who gives a shit? It's just a dunk, which I think is just a good way to go up to bat for your player in the grand scheme of things. And then he put a positive spin on it, um, a little bit of Tom Withers putting a positive spin on it too, but at least Jared was trying to play defense. That's the only defense you can make for Allen being put on a poster like that. Um, the other notable thing is just that Kevin Love really stressed that this game against Philly, even though it was a loss and the team was frustrated after the fact, you could really tell on Darius is just overall body language and how he was answering questions. Like he was very frustrated with the loss. Um, it was a good playoff test for them. It was a playoff caliber scenario. Like the the crowd was juiced and hostile. Um, Philadelphia, the team was juiced just because of the James Harden trade. You could really tell like they just were playing with a lot of energy. Um and Kevin Love just kind of making a note while noteworthy and just kind of telling the guys that hey, this is uh this is kind of what the playoffs are like. You need to be ready for this. And Kevin Love really stressed that post All Star break that, and also Bickerstaff said this too that a lot of resting for some of the key players going into consideration, especially when they're like just their overall schedule, the team's overall health and well being. He's not going to force guys to go full bore all eighty two games. And then Kevin Love kind of elaborated on it a little bit, saying that they kind of just are aware like who they maybe do and don't want to play in the playoffs, and maybe they'll take that into consideration down the stretch as well. But he also also jokingly said it's hard to believe he wasn't part of trade rumors as well, which was just kind of funny to hear. <laughs> so yeah. it's the first time since he's come to Cleveland and for a while. It's been almost like a decade that he hasn't been in trade rumors. Yeah, honestly, like I I Katie Heindall uh, wrote a really good piece about that. This people can go read a dime what it's like to see your name in trade rumors. Like it, it like, it's very fun. I know for people to tweet about and stuff, and like we we do, we talk about it. It's not, it's like weird to have your to be dissected in that way. You know, it's like kind of uncomfortable. It's one of the things I don't necessarily love about it's, like transaction culture. Sometimes the human aspect does get thrown to the wayside yeah. when it comes to like transaction and leaks and rumors and stuff. Is yeah, these aren't actual. They, people view them as like. Assets. They've been assets. I, I have NFT stuck on my brain because of the GD Super Bowl because I heard about that in crypto, every other in electric cars, every other commercial. But it's like, yeah, they're, they're viewed as assets, not as people. And that that definitely yeah. there's a degree of separation for fans of that as well, where they don't view these athletes as people. They view them as just objects for entertainment. So yeah, I, I did uh in front of the program, Kevin Singh, which was after it was a he he took an Amtrak, shots to Amtrak down to Philly from New York to go to this game. He 
He was he was having a he said the the Sixers fans were engaged. They were there was a lot of F Ben Simmons chance. It was like a whole vibe. He said it was like very playoff. He said he was engaging fans on Kevin Love's plot positive plus yeah. minus and attributes. Yeah. And I'm just like, you are a fan of Chris Manning through and through. That's my boy. That's my boy. That's 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 my day one. Day one right there is it's my guy. Phoebe um, Bridgers concert attender. You're you're absolutely that that is my, my Phoebe Bridgers guy. My you know has pilled me on um you know, public transit. Queen. Shh, shh, dude, shh, we, we stand, you know, I, uh, we stand. that's going to be one of the, th- when I eventually, when the, you know, when the, when the, when the, the, ch- the massive check clearing, I get my, the, the office, I drew, and there's going to be a massive, uh, there's going to be some kind of Phoebe Bridgers wall art. I'm very sure. I have my Punisher model. I can stare at it right now. Okay. Bro, it's, it's, it's going to be the topless photo for that. <laughs> you're telling it. And then your wife will just <laughs> handy divorce papers. I, you know, <clears throat> I don't think she would do that, but I think it would come down, you know? We would have like a stern conversation. All right, Evan, after the break, we're going to get into uh, a, we're going to do a new little thing we're going to do for through the All-Star break while we're filming some some segments and things. I'll, I'll explain that what we're going to do in this little game of sorts after the break. But Evan, you're going to first tell everyone about our friends at Bet Online. Absolutely. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season is over and we head towards the NHL regular season and the NBA stretch run and more. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just those sports I mentioned. BetOnline has up to the minute info on pro and college hoops. The NHL, as I mentioned, boxing, UFC, along with real time updates of current games. Do not wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for the 2022 season. Bet online, where the game starts in the exclusive betting partner, the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, last segment of the show. Evan, here, you know what we're going to do, but here to the listeners, here's what we're going to do. Over the next week or so, uh, up until the Cavs come back from the All-Star break, and we really have to dive into the games again. And, you know, there's frankly just without games when we're doing a daily show. We need stuff to talk about, and we're not going to just generate nonsense here because that's not what that's not what we do. Evan sometimes generates some nonsense. I, I for one, try to stay, you know, on the straight and narrow a little bit. Um, but we're going to do some different hey, categories. Very much the same for me. I mean, some you know, sometimes you you have some chaos energy that that really throws me for a loop. But we're going to do some different awards. We're going to give out some different awards and categories. Some of them are going to be the awards you know and love in terms of MVP. Like, we'll give a Cavs MVP. We'll give a most improved player. Like, we won't do Rookie of the Year, but maybe we'll discuss what Evan Mobley for an episode. Stuff like that. If you have suggestions for things you'd like us to, like, decide on, let us know uh, on Twitter at LockdownCavs. Email us at LockdownCavs at gmail.com. Or, to, or in the YouTube comments, um, you can you can leave us some topics you'd like us to cover. What we're going to start with and talk about it for the next 10 minutes or so is the Cavs' biggest surprise this year. Evan, I have come up with some nominees, and then we're going to pick what we decide collectively is the Cavs', Cavs is biggest surprise this year. Are you ready? You okay. can add in any nominations. If there's something I missed here, you can add one in, and then we can go. So here we go. Here are the nominees in, in no particular order. The Cleveland's overall success this year, so in terms of how good they've been, Evan Mobley being as good as he's been already, Jetty Osmond's bounce back year, and Darius Garland's season in terms of how well he's played with the load that he's carried. Those mm-hmm. are the four that I came mm-hmm. up with just thinking about this quickly. Did I, is there any like obvious ones that, that I missed? J.B. Bickerstaff really being the coach for this team. I had my reservations and doubts when he first interviewed for the coaching position and he was named associate head coach over under, after Bayline was named head coach. And also there were doubts about Jared Allen's contract extension saying the cast paid him too much because Rachon Holmes in Sacramento was providing similar production last season. But like he has really elevated his game and taken it to the next level. And like, that's why we're talking about him in all-star consideration. Like there's a lot of surprises this year, but like a Mm -hmm. lot of it just hitting at the same time and at the right time for the Cavs really goes hand in hand with the Cavs overall success. So my maybe more subcategories, maybe the Allen contract is a big one because that Holmes thing kind of stuck in my craw because he was paid so much less than he Allen was with by Sacramento that it's definitely something to take into consideration. But I, I agree, man. Like the Jetty Osmond bounce back here. You and I talk, you and I have always talked about this. You, Dave Zava, Carter Rodriguez, others. Like you have been the truthers on Jetty, and I'll give you credit. You believed in the numbers. You thought last season was an outlier. Either he was set up to bounce back and regress back to just what his the law of averages say he would, or he truly is an abysmal player. And 
the law of averages reign true. And I think that's the biggest surprise for me is because I was all the way out on Jetty. I mean, okay, Evan so you, Mobley too, but <laughs> so you think you you're saying that for you the Jetty one is number one? It's up there for me. Okay. Um, I think because I, I would I would here's how I would how I would do this. Well, the Cavs overall success I think is number one. That's the biggest surprise. Okay. That's like the obvious yeah. one. So if I'm gonna like whittle this list down, including the ones you suggested, I would whittle off the JB stuff because I think that is like a surprise, but it is like. I don't know how, like, I have a harder time, like, ex- I have a harder time, like, gr- like, like, some of these other ones just had, like, clear, we sort of had, like, I think, clear, like, visions on, and that is sort of just, like, to me, the JB thing goes hand in hand with their success, to some degree. So, like, I kind of, like, he's also done like some unconventional things, too, like, you and I both rolled, looked at each other, like, he's really gonna start Larry Markin into three, and he has stuck to his guns every single game. Yeah, There's a brief yeah. stint, he played, like, a traditional lineup, but then he went right back with starting Dean Wade at the three again. Yeah, I still kind of want to, I still think I crossed that off. I crossed off the Garland season, because I think we both thought he would be good. I think it is surprising that he's carried the load that he's done, and like, I don't know if I thought he was going to be an all star, but because he's this is like just an incredible year, but I, I would probably cut that off. Where where does the Mobley one go for you? How does that compare to the Jetty one in terms of your surprise factor? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say I'd be surprised because I think I had very high expectations for Evan Mobley heading into his rookie season, just in general, just because I. I digested a lot of his tape from his time in high school. And then I watched him pretty closely at USC, especially when it became clear that the Cavs weren't going to be very good last season. Um, and that just something always stuck out to me. Like this kid's special. I just always have gone by the general rule of thumb that big men take longer to develop in the league compared to guards, just because it's a ball dominant league. And if you put your bad team, you're going to put your hands ball in the guards hands more than your big men. And I expected him to kind of come along slowly, especially with Allen and just, everything's just kind of clicked properly. And so I, I, I'd rank that on the bottom of my biggest surprise. Like I wasn't over overly surprised. My expectations were dampened a little bit after summer league, just because I guess you can't take full stock of him playing with Isaac Okoro and um, Chandler Vaudrin as his point guard. God, that's a name I thought I haven't would never say again, but that's just kind of where I'm. I think I put Mobley towards the bottom of like biggest surprises. I, I think I have it a tenor just because I th- I thought he was going to be like a year two guy was better and I I I like obviously was I I think we praised the pick for well, universally yeah, well year two he will be better yeah I I thought I didn't know if I thought he would be like one of the most impactful rookies like because most of the time even when rookies are good I tend to think that like they are not as impactful to winning and Mobley is impacting winning in a way that is like very clear and measurable. And and you can see on the film, you see in the numbers, like from every angle you want to look at it, Evan Mobley has been like a very clear impact on, on success and, and winning Cavs basketball this year. So to me, that is a surprise and it's like a higher stakes surprise, right? Like I, like the jetty thing to me gets dinged a little bit if we're like to nitpick through these. Because like it is a little bit, I, I, I I'm not as surprised by it as you, just because I kind of thought he it was it was either going to be like he does this to some degree or is bad, and it's like lower stakes. The the Mobley thing is such high stakes, right? Like to me, the Mobley thing and him being as good as he is, and be, to me being surprising, it has like really high stakes. So I I think we we sort of see those maybe opposite, but I think you have said what is the number one, which is the this team being really good. And look, we have said it a bunch in the show. We both picked the Cavs on the under on 26 and a half. We were, we were haters. We were whatever you want to, you know, I'm not going to, I don't, that apology form bullshit on Twitter is nonsense. I'm not doing that. But like this team is much better than I thought. They are Mm -hmm. one of the best teams in the East. They are a surefire playoff team at this point in the year. Like they're like just legitimate and like go back to our weekend episode. We did a whole bunch of stuff about the Pacers and Sixers games. And a lot of the conversation was about the legitimacy and the quality of this cast team and, and what we, how we understand it. This team being as good as it is right now is like, I think not only did it take us by surprise, I think it took the organization by surprise. I think it took some of the players by surprise. I think it took the league by surprise. I think that's the winner. I think the fact that this Cavs team is like capital G good is is the biggest surprise here and I, I don't really know if it's close yeah they're capital g good sorry i finally saw the uh the rafa tweet that everyone was talking about yeah shout out to, to uh spanish voice that kevs rafa for going viral for like 
outing Snoop Dogg smoking a blunt before the halftime show. Look, and look here's the thing. If you're surprised by Snoop Dogg, like... Uh, Dude, Snoop has so much weed on him. It's legal in California, bro. I, but you if know. you're surprised by Snoop Dogg, like, inhaling marijuana, you know, doing the reefer, as, as people in the 50s said, like, I got a house, like, for in Alaska that is, like, a summer beachfront property that I can tell you that's, like, on the border of Canada. Like, it's going to be snowy, but it's a summer house. I'm telling you it's a summer house. So if you want to buy that, get at me. I got a lakefront property in Winnipeg that is not a frozen hellscape right now. Justin yeah. Rowan knows because he listens to every episode. Um, yeah, th- this Cavs team just full stop. Like, did not expect them to be this good. If someone expected them to be this good heading into the season, I think they're lying or they're just completely like fully in on being a fan, which is fine. Not going to tell you how to be a fan. Like Chris said, not going to fall out an apology for him. I've admitted several times I was wrong about this team. This Cavs seems fun. There's no doubt about it. I think now if the only cynical part of me is, it is one, how far of a run are they going to make in the playoffs? But no matter what, how are they going to look next year? Because they could have similar vibes to the Atlanta Hawks or even the New York Knicks from last season where they both had really strong regular seasons. The Hawks obviously made the Eastern Finals. The Knicks got flamed out by the Hawks in the first round. Both teams have disappointed this season. Ricky Rubio really just has put this quote and idea in my head that it's not about the great season you have now. It's can you surpass that great season and have an even better season next year? So I'm going to admit I'm wrong, and I'm curious to see how the Cavs look next year. And I fully believe they'll be better because, like Chris said, I thought – I mean, Evan Mobley is a year or two player. He's obviously going to come back in the second season even better than before. The luxury of being in an NBA strength and conditioning program and just kind of getting fully seasoned in that will really help them a lot. I think the Cavs will make some beneficial roster moves to build around this big three that they've kind of put together organically, which will be really exciting to see. Um, and this cast team's going to get better in the season as well. I, I think they are going to probably add a body or two or a player or two, I should say, through buyout or something. They might cut Ed Davis and Kevin Pangos to do it. And just kind of see where they go from there. Like this is this is fun times in Cleveland again. Like not, I hate that tourism video. I know a Clevelander made it, but it's a good quote. It's fun to watch the Cavs basketball team right now. And Kevin Love, just to <laughs> circle back to the second segment, did say that fans should start buying tickets now because they're going to probably be a lot harder to find by the end of the year because the arena is getting fuller and fuller, and it is cool to see that it isn't like a mausoleum on a Wednesday night in the dead of winter. Like it's pretty full and it's pretty loud. Like the crowd's into it. Like it's fun. Yeah. Uh, I, I would just, I would say um, for me, I, I think this is the answer. I, I want to, I want to slowly caution against like assuming linear progress. Oh, there's because no I, way to properly chart progress. The no, no. And I progress is all I, what? Yeah. It's all gonna, variable they, based. These are always a little like nothing is ever exactly as you expect. And if you say they're exactly expect, you're 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 full of it. But um, this team, I, I mean, straight up, I think is surprisingly really interesting. And I think they I, I don't think there's a bigger surprise in the league this year than the Cleveland Cavaliers. And I think that's kind of a good pin um, on, on what we're saying here, Evan. But uh, any any final thoughts? I you know as we were recording and you were talking Lakers about Cavs, are pretty huh? surprising. It's surprising how bad I, they I, are. Okay, yeah, but who? You know what? Not surprised, MFR. Not not surprised. Um, I'm also surprised that Crypto.com makes so much money that they couldn't afford a young actor to play a young LeBron James instead of the creepy soulless. Okay, they, we, they, they didn't. LeBron. They didn't. Buy, no more crypto ads. They're not paying us. You know. Not yet. Free. I'll take. I'll take free Bitcoin. Chris won't. I mean, I'm not into NFTs. Those are my my NFT is a, is another crypto is a little different. It's still sketchy, but it is not. No, thank you. Like NFTs. Um. Well, don't worry. Martin's gonna be buying some local ad space soon. Just just a little teaser. We're starting our own crypto, guys. You can get in on the base floor with us. We're not actually going on crypto. We're not. This is just this is just a just. You are here. We're up here, and then you're down here. Then people go underneath you here, and eventually the base fills out. Pay no attention to the shape I just drew. Okay. Anyway, that's going to be it. Uh, I was going to let you like exit properly, but we're, we're doing that. So um, look, if you want a good second listen uh, today, check out Lockdown Bets, your daily one-stop shop for your gambling needs. That's Lockdown Bets, hosted by your Rubric with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. And may I also suggest Lockdown Hawks coming out. Cavs play Tuesday. Maybe go listen to Brad Roland. Brad rocks. Go listen to Lockdown Hawks to get ready. That's what I'm going to be doing to prep for that game, frankly. But 
uh, you do you. But until next time on Christie's Evan, we'll be back after Cavs Hawks on Tuesday, which until Evan told me it was on Tuesday, I thought it was on Wednesday. So thanks to Evan. For I thought that it was one. on the Monday, so it's okay. Hey, we're, we're doing great. We're really in the thick of it here. But we'll be back after that game. I also forgot on... today's Valentine's Day, so I'm two for two. See, now you're just cell phoning, and like that, you can't even blame me for that. You're just cell phoning yourself. You're oh not... no, I felt like shit when I woke up this morning, and there was a gift sitting on the table, and I'm like, my birthday was last week, and then I'm like, click, click, click. Oh, right. I got myself out of the doghouse, guys. Don't worry. <sighs> Okay. Until next time, everyone, be well, be safe. We'll talk to you after Cavs Hawks.